another piece of cuts we had to talk about is that, you know, we originally started out with a certain funding level, and then later we we added some additional funding, uh, you know, roughly 300 million beyond the 500 million, and it was for the COTS assurance funding activity, and and I think that's a that's a that's a very important thing to think about, you know, when we were just doing this kind of um, as I talked about before, this experiment where we were seeing what the commercial sector could really provide, and there wasn't a, an identified absolute need to go forward, we could be, schedule could slip a little bit. If these things didn't work right on orbit, we had time to recover and move forward. But it became really clear that, it, that we're going to have to really drive these designs to a, to a more mature level than we had gotten in the original proposals and original concepts from the contractors. So there were certain tests and certain activities that they didn't feel that they needed to go do. So they didn't put them in their proposals. They weren't part of their, their activities. So for example, there, was a, there wasn't a thermal vacuum test for some things to look at heater performance. There wasn't an EMI test. Um, there wasn't a, a rendezvous docking case demonstration on one, of the, on one of the providers. So what we did is we decided to put some additional money on the contract where NASA wanted to see how these vehicles would really perform in terms of EMI. We would really see how they would do in a thermal vacuum chamber or, and see how we could actually do a demonstration in the docking. So we added this assurance money. And what that was to do was to do tests that, based on NASA experience, these are going to be very important tests. And, and that turned out to be really critical. If, if you look in the case of the uh, EMI or the electromagnetic interference case, um, that test showed a lot of susceptibility of critical rendezvous prox ops equipment to the EMI environment. We would not have discovered that until the demonstration flight, and the demonstration flight would have been unsuccessful. So that test was really worth its weight and cost by us performing that test on the ground. It exposed real weaknesses that required engineering solutions in the hardware, and the design was deficient in certain EMI areas. Now, the thermal activity, there were some problems with the thermal models, but there was nothing of that significance. But it really did, in the EMI world, was really absolutely critical. And what that did is we could have discovered that failure in flight on the demonstration flight, but that would have slowed things down even more, and we would have been even more critical to get these things flying moving forward. So, so again, where the contractors felt that these were not required things, NASA had the authority and the ability to add some assurance funding on top and say, let's go do these specific tests and see how good your real design is. And it took us out of this debate kind of activity with them about is the design good enough, is the design not good enough. We didn't have that debate. We actually paid for a test. We did the test, and they could see with their own eyes, their own test data, read their own instrumentation about how, how effective their design was in accomplishing what we needed to go do. So that funding we added in turned, to be, turned out to be unbelievably important and a real critical element moving forward. So I think that's another lesson learned to take back out of this Space Act agreement is to reserve some funding that you may not get all the milestones you want from the providers, they may short circuit some things that you think are needed and you need some ability and maybe some additional funding to insert some of those things based on past experience that these tests are extremely important and need to be done.